Hey, welcome back and happy holidays, everybody. Yeah, all right. Thank you for liking and subscribing, right? And for those who subscribe and become a member of the tribe, we call you officially uh, note takers, right? <laughs> okay, welcome. So what are we talking about today? The endocrine system and specifically growth hormone. We're going to get quite a bit in depth there for a minute and then we're going to uh, break it out and discuss some of the conditions that surround growth hormone, okay? And who am I? Cliff Davis. I'm Associate Dean of Nursing and longtime advanced medical surgical professor, okay? And so at RN Cliff Notes, what are we doing? Helping students to see through the larger concepts, right, that may be blocking your view from fully understanding the topics that we're talking about. And how do we help you to cut through that? By giving you that red area there, which is consisting of study smart strategies. Absolutely. You tuned into the right channel, and let's jump right in. So, <clears throat> our BIF quiz. Bring it forward. We want to bring the information forward and kind of test you out, right? We don't want this to be some blind video, just boom, okay, so I'm here talking about it, blah, 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 blah. no, 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 okay? We came to learn, and the best way to learn is to be challenged, right? Yes. So, here we go, Biff Quiz. On a sheet of paper or on your device, we're numbering that thing or that paper from one to six, okay? All right, good stuff. Number one. Number one, what is the name of the hormone that reduces water loss from the kidneys? by causing them to reabsorb water. What hormone causes the kidneys to reabsorb water, right? So you should have typed in or written down the following. ADH, antidiuretic hormone. And just catch that right there, right? Because diuresis means to what? Let out urine. So antidiuresis to stop the release of urinary water. Super simple, right? That's the way we want it. And number two, what is the name of synthetic ADH? Whoa, all right, check that out. Boom, we went there on you. <laughs> okay, synthetic ADH. And you say, you should have typed in or written down, vasopressin. Yes, vasopressin. So you've heard it in circles. And you're just like, hmm, I hope I remember that. No, no, let's lock it down for you, okay? Here, first things first. Let's take that first, uh, that first piece, vaso, right? Vaso, we're referring to vessels, right? So something's going on with the vessels. Then check that next part out. Pressing, okay, well, wait, pressure. So what, vessel pressure? So this is impacting vessel pressure by doing what? causing the retention of water, what would retaining the water do? Cause the blood pressure to rise. Yeah, vessel pressure. Check that out, all right? Increasing the BP. All right, yeah, not bad. That's what it takes, right? Don't just wanna say, oh, vasopressin, moving, keep it moving on, no, no. Came here to learn, right? And what, learn and take the information what? Forward, not forget, okay? All right, now, number three, what is the name of the hormone that controls metabolism? I know, yeah, we shifted it up on you right there, boy. Woo, we're like, metabolism, what the, right? <laughs> that's right. So, that's right. So, if the, you have too much of this, then your body's going to be thinner, all right? Uh, if you don't have enough of it, your body's going to be bigger. And you should have put down thyroid hormone, good old TH, right? All right. Thyroid hormone controls metabolism. So important when it comes time for exams. Okay? Now, four. What is the name of synthetic thyroid hormone? Oh, right? You know that one. You've been to clinical and looking in patient's charts. A lot of patients are on this, right? And that would be Synthroid. But check it out. All right? Let's break it down. We said synthetic thyroid, correct? So check out the red. Syn. Synthroid, right? Synthroid, or level thyroxine. That's how the name is derived. Synthetic thyroid, or level thyroxine. Excellent, right? Moving on. So now, what is the other name for growth hormone? Right? Okay. 
And we're not going to say, I think it's human growth hormone. No. <laughs> right? We're looking for another term. Okay? And you should have what? Somatotropin. Yes. Look at that. Look at the, Check that sound out. Right? Doesn't that just, right? right? Isn't that awesome? Somatotropin. Right? <laughs> like that word. But check the word out. Okay? First of all, there's soma. You've heard of soma as a medication, right? Anything when we're talking about things that are somatic, we're talking about physical things, right? So when you hear soma, think physical. Then, trope. Trope, right? Wait, wait, let, let's get that trope right because think about it. You've heard of muscle atrophy. So what happened to the muscle? Atrophy, what, it didn't grow, it, it actually, right, shrunk, right? Or there was tissue lost. So when you hear troph, you're talking about some type of growth. So soma tropin, physical troph, what? Growth. Physical growth is what that word is explaining to you, right? It's telling you what it is in its name. So you want to remember that kind of thing. And this is what you need. You don't want to just look at that later at final exam time. It's like, oh my God. What is somatotrope? I can never remember that. All right? Now you can. All right? Our human growth hormone, HGH. All right, now, somatotropin, what does it do? Promote cell proliferation. Hold it. Cell proliferation. Proliferation what? Growth. Moving forward, right? Cells are multiplying. And, catch this word, mitosis. If you watched the previous video, we talked about mitre. To miter something is like a miter saw. We take one thing and what? We cut that one thing into two. So a miter splitting into two. And osis means process of. So what? The process of splitting into two. So when the cells are splitting, right? So if this hormone promotes cell proliferation, that's just another way of saying what? Growth. And you want to catch that for that and be prepared for that for the exam. Cellular proliferation, another way of saying growth. Mitosis, by the way. If we're looking for the, home, the hormone that promotes mitosis, then we're still talking about what? Promoting growth. Because a cell split and multiply what's happening. Growth is taking place. So sometimes you can miss that on an exam because you don't realize that cellular proliferation or mitosis, just another way of saying what? Growth. All right, so that's used to treat growth failure in children and adults. So we can give them some anotropin and help them grow some more. Okay, well now, number six. I like this one because, you know, and there are too many of us walking around and you know what I mean? We don't understand what's going on with these cells. And we need to understand these things from the cellular level. That boosts our science, right? We want to have a higher level of scientific knowledge. So here we go. What, which of the following pancreatic cells produces somatotropin? So take your pick. A, beta cells. B, delta cells. And C, alpha cells. Well, let me repeat that again. Because if you're driving, don't look at your daggone phone. <laughs> All right? I got you covered. A, beta cells. B, delta cells, and C, alpha cells. Okay, now, so you should have picked B, delta cells. Yes. So let's pause for the cause and make sure everybody's with us. Start at the bottom, okay? Uh, so alpha cells, first thing to realize is that as you're looking at the spelling of glucagon and insulin, we realize that neither, you know, insulin doesn't have the letter A in it, but glucagon, what, does. So glucagon, right, has the letter A, A, alpha. Glucagon is produced by alpha cells, okay? And then you have beta cells, and let's see, if you've got glucagon, and that's represented by alpha cells. What's the very next thing to discuss? What balances out glucagon? Insulin. So the next thing to talk about, alpha what? Beta. A, B. 
The next thing to talk about is insulin. Glucagon then insulin. So beta cells are, right, what secrete insulin. Then that leaves delta cells. And by the way, D, delta. If we've got somebody that's failed to grow, right, they what? Did not grow. Did D did not grow. Then we're giving them what? Somatotropin to help them grow. So delta cells secrete somatotropin because they did not grow. Awesome. Okay, now, you know I like to do these little charts and show you, right, the breakdown of under secretion of a hormone or over secretion of the hormone. And in this case, if you have under secretion of growth hormone, then that can set the stage for dwarfism. But we must bear in mind that heredity can play a huge role in this. Uh, so can nutrition. So, uh, not solely, you know, our only growth hormone. But the potential cause is deficiency in growth hormone, causing dwarfism or short stature. Or as many uh, dwarfs refer to themselves as little people. Be cautious of other terms that might be deemed derogatory. But dwarfism, right? Short stature, little people, that tends to be acceptable, right? All right, now, so dwarfism or short stature. So under development of the body, the state of being a dwarf, it may be the result of the developmental anomaly or nutritional or hormonal deficiencies. Yeah. Other factors coming into play. Then now, that was under secretion of growth hormone. Let's look at over secretion of it. And so we've got gigantism and acromegaly. Ooh, right? Got to get into those. So let's see. Hopefully I'll go the right way with this thing. No, I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, gigantism. Uh, let's see. Tall stature this time instead of short stature. And, all right, so we got our super tall gentleman there. And it results from excessive growth hormone, right, in which they grow beyond the average uh, for the individual's heredity. But, or however, it may result from dietary or other factors. So, there are other factors coming into play with this, not just growth hormone. But that is a significant factor. And we will get into um, how this is corrected, by the way. Okay, then now, we want to take a look at acromegaly, okay? And in the case of acromegaly, what I want to point out to you is this mega, right? Whenever we see mega, something's bigger in the body than it should be. So we've heard of things like cardiomegaly, what? The person's heart is larger than it should be. Uh, hepatomegaly, then, you know, splenomegaly. Hepatomegaly, what? Liver's bigger than it should be. Spleen's bigger than it should be in the case of splenomegaly, right? So acromegaly, something in the body's bigger than it should be, and develops when the pituitary gland, and we'll come back to this, the pituitary gland produces too much growth hormone in adulthood. Uh, when this happens, your bones increase in size, including those of the hand, the feet, and the face. And when we think about it, we have seen this condition in some adults. Uh, and you, you've probably noticed it in people, but you didn't realize it was acromegaly, right? Larger hands and feet and things, and especially a very prominent chin. And given in this example is this uh, nice lady here who uh, the numbers that you see represent her ages, by the way. So all of those are pictures of the same woman, right? So at age nine age 16, age 33 there in the corner, and then age 56. Yeah, so large hands, as I said, prominent chin, things like that. Okie dokie, so that's acromegaly. And by the way, that was up at the top with gigantism, fantastic. Now, before we wrap up, let's do a bonus. <laughs> you know how we do this, right? Here it comes, number seven, eight, who knows? <laughs> okay. All right, so now, I want to ask you, what is the name of the procedure where 
the physician, the surgeon, will remove a person's pituitary, particularly in the case of a person suffering from gigantism. What's the name of that procedure? Well, they're going to go into that person's uh, head and remove the pituitary gland to stop that person from continuing to grow. Okay? And that procedure is called a hypophysectomy. So hypo, right? Physectomy, almost like we're saying physics. Hypophysectomy. And they're going to snip out that person's pituitary gland. Generally speaking, what they'll do is they may likely lift up the person's lip, right, in the surgical procedure, go under the lip, right, and drill into this area here in the maxilla. And once they get through there, uh, or behind that space in the nasal cavity, they have a pretty much a straight shot to that person's pituitary, right? There's a lot of, there's a fair amount of open cavity space there that makes it relatively simple uh, in a fiber optic sense to remove the pituitary at that point. Now, uh, if we add on to that, I want you to realize that, that person comes out, depending on the approach, many times they'll have what's called a mustache dressing and we need to keep a close, close eye on that mustache dressing, right? Here it comes. What are we watching for? All right, so naturally we're watching for bleeding, you know, hemorrhaging. But we're also watching for CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. Absolutely. Since they entered, right, the head and went near the cranial cavity like that, yeah. Yeah, we want to be on the lookout for CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. Hey, thank you guys again. Happy holidays. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you, note takers. All right, we'll catch you guys next time.